Welcome again. It is recorded from now, the first session of ORG 6011. And I think it is the first day of the new semester, okay? It is the first day. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, in this course, uh, more than everything, we will talk about change, and because of change is one of the greatest challenges in business world. Uh, we have some part of different change, some types of different change. For example, I will share with you some ideas about change and you send your idea about this. It is modification. At first, it is modification. After that, it is change. After that, it is transformation. And the fourth stage is transcendence. They are difficult and difficult to separate them together. Some are mixed together. For example, how do you think about modification? Luisa, how do you think, what is the meaning of modification, for example, in a company, an organization? Mm, some small adjustments, so mm -hmm. not really too big. Mm -hmm. A Stop. minor rule that is mm -hmm. added. So it is a type of adjustment. And what is difference, Wayne, what is difference between modification and change? As Luisa said, modification is sometimes of a small adjustment. Change is an upper level of modification. How do you think about change differences between change and modification? Change might be a complete new process, uh -huh. a complete new way of doing things. Yeah. So the elements have been removed out and the new elements are installed. And what about transformation, Kenneth? How do you think about transformation and differences between transformation and change and modification? How do you think about transfor transformation? Um, I think transformation is exactly the same as change. I cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? It's better. Okay. I think transformation is exactly the same as change. Well, at least transformation is more of like internal things and a change. Mm -hmm. like broad. Yeah, it is changing the one form to another form at the same level. One form to another form. But if you choose the level of change from one quality to another upper quality, it is called transcendence. Transcendence going up okay also I want you to think about the concepts in this class because you are the students of master degree and one of the things you should learn in your educational courses is thinking deeper and different if you cannot thinking deeper and different in contrast with the beginning of your course it doesn't work. It is not about taking courses and failing or passing the courses. It is not about it. It is about thinking, analyzing, and decision making. If you want to have a good manager, if you want to be a good leader, you should be a good thinker. And for thinking, you should have three elements. One, data collection, gathering information, assessment, two, data analysis, and three, giving results. These are the major parts of decision making. And this is related to your attitude, 
and you're actively thinking about things because of that. During this course, a lot of times I will ask you about the differences between very similar concepts, very, very similar concepts. You should learn to distinguish between the similar concepts because as a concept, they are very near together. But as an operation, they are different. Another question, for example. What is the difference between power, force, and authority? What is the difference? Which is the first one? I cannot uh, pronounce your name. It is Husa Maldin. Husa Maldin, okay. I cannot hear you. You are muted. It's Husam. Husam, okay. So yeah. what's the difference between power, force, and authority? How do you think? Uh, so authority, if you have authority, that means that you have responsibility. And, uh, Thank you. and yeah, and big power. Like it's, it come, if it's like a pyramid, it's going to be the top of the pyramid. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. then the difference between power and force? Or power and force and pressure, for example. Yeah, for force, uh, I think it's gum. It's uh, it's uh, it's gonna come uh, num number two maybe, and mm -hmm. then power power is the last one. Wow. Other people here. Wayne. I you have some you have some topics in your courses, like. Power, for example, uh, have you uh, take the course of leadership in leadership in organization changes also in this course? You have some uh, courses, some topics about power. What's the meaning of power? Professionally describe power, not popular uh, operation, popular um, operational power. Professional, you will be professional in your field. Think about it. It is. Think about the concepts in your textbook, in your real life. Which of you want to be then in the future to be a leader? I want One, to. Wayne, two, three, Luisa. Do you want to be a leader? Okay. I have a question. I have a question of the future leaders of the companies, business, maybe of the world. Why not? What is the difference between a boss, a manager, and a leader? What's the difference? David. I was, I was gonna say that a leader is mm -hmm. gonna lead by an example, by doing, by showing. A oh. boss is gonna give orders. He's gonna, you. gonna tell people what to do. And a manager is gonna be responsible to organize and manage the orders given or by him or by someone else. A major question. What is the difference between manager of a company and a leader of a company? Yes, boss is something different. I right. agree with you. I would say leader of a company. It is someone that, as I said, would be someone helpful, someone that would be always willing to help someone there available to other employees. And as I see as a leader, someone who can be benefit, who, uh, who, who someone who can see as uh, a helpful tool, you know, in the organization. Mm -hmm. Not someone like as people usually are afraid of or something like this. I would say that uh, CEO is a leader and manager at the same time. Yeah. You consider CEO as the leader or as a manager, which? Both of them. Um, I would say that uh, the CEO is the person that bears the risk. Uh, first, my name is Laura. Um, on the moment, Laura, my welcome. name is Chief. Thank you. So um, the CEO is the risk bearer. Um, he makes, uh, he finalizes on most of the decision that needs to be taken. Um, the manager more or less um, relays those decisions that has been made by the CEO to the staffs of the company and makes sure that that decision that has been made is being carried out. So 
That's how I see both worlds. All are correct. And sometimes our difference is intellectual. I ask you to think about the concepts. As a future professional, you should think about them. For example, a boss, a chef, is a for a tribe. As the gentleman said, he will have some order. He is in the back of the tribe and push them forward. I'm at the back of you. I support you. He's chef, he's boss. But in the position, manager is at your corner, at your side and says, let's go. So boss and chief has some members, but manager has some co-workers. But the leader is in front and say, follow me. He is the number one, he or she is the number one. So leader has followers, not co-workers, not members. And in our organization, someone who try to improve the present situation of an organization, she or he is called manager to improve the present situation, the present state. But leaders are future oriented. Always leaders are future oriented. Because of that, when you are studying and talking about the strategic management, you are talking and thinking about the leadership, honestly. Why? Because the strategy is about future. Let's go to the course. With this introduction, I wanted to show you what are my expectations as my students in these eight weeks. It is not so important to read whole the book in the sessions or not. You can read it at home. It is interesting for me and important for me that when you are here as the hybrid students, interact with each other, with me, about the major thinkings and intellectual abilities. Because after two years, at the maximum time, after two years, you will be the manager. You should know how to analyze the problems. It is not related to your personality. It is not related to your charismatic features. It is related to your intellectual skills. Thinking and defining things is one of the greatest intellectual skills that a few people has. If you want to be an ordinary leader, sorry, there is no leader as an ordinary people. You will be an ordinary manager, not an ordinary leader. Leader is about thinking. It is my force to you to think about the problems, to talk in the class. And it is not related to your grade. It is not related to your money, even related to your graduation and degree. It is related to your personality as the future leaders. Leadership needs some characteristic of personality. And the, in this class, like this class, you can make and improve your PowerPoint and suppress and recorrect some of your weakness point. Okay. In this book, in this course, we will talk about change. At first, in chapter one, you will see in your book about three companies. Also, one of them has bankruptcy about one month ago, JCPenney. JCPenney was bankrupted one month ago. Do you know how can you check the bankruptcy list in the internet in America? Please say me, my future leaders, my future managers, my future great DBA students, it is one of you say me as the students in a, one of the greatest countries in the world, which site can you check the list of bankruptcy, for example, for July 2020? It's your assignment. I was gonna say, just put in the Google. Can you check it, sir, why not? But there is a very specific site that says you just now, how many debt America has minute by minute, one special site. It is US debt clock. Everybody has computed, check it, US debt clock. See it?
Can you see my page? Yes. Can you see the clock? Yes. It is US dead clock, just now. Minute by minute, 26 and C and other things. These are your up-to-date instruments, up-to-date tools. You should know about them. You will be at the maximum time after only two years. You will be the financial leaders, the financial managers, the business managers. These are very popular tools for you as the future professionals. So for the next session, I want all of you to say me about the bankruptcies in July 2020 and which site can formally and legally say you this, 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 this. Two of them I will say you, JCPenney and 24 Hours Fitness. They are bankrupted, done. And other companies. Uh, these are not very formal assignment, honestly. I want to have some good time together to gathering some important informal information, which is very good in a competitive market of business, competitive market of job, business job and other things. These are very extra information you should know. Okay. In this chapter, the book has talked about three companies, which is Belgian Street Econis Medical Center, Sears Holdings, and JCPenney. In this chapter, we will talk about the necessity of change and studying change. I don't want to have a lot of time in this chapter because the stories is not so important. You can read it in the book. But I want you to know that what are the importance of the storytelling in human science and even and even and even in business and management skills. Organizational change is a complex process that deserves careful attention. The word I have bold for you, these are the keywords. Note, I'm psychologist. I have a PhD of psychology in organizational and other parts not related to organizational, but I have worked in positive organizational psychology. From each 10 words, you should know only two words, 20%. These are the keywords. If you want to be a good reader, a rapid reader, a fast reader, you should find those two keywords. Except of that, you will be tired and tired and tired after, for example, reading one hour. So the keywords are here bolded. Organizational change is a complex process that deserves careful attention. Why change process can benefit from thoughtful management, the large range of factors that influence outcomes means that desired outcomes are not guaranteed. Some of my greatest students says me about the Ambiguity tolerance. What is ambiguity tolerance or tolerance of ambiguity? We was first to talk about ambiguity tolerance, uncertainty principle, ambiguity tolerance. Have you heard this concept before or not? Can you guess what is the meaning of ambiguity tolerance or tolerance of uncertainty? Laura, do you want to talk about it? Is that kind of like, it's kind of like going with the flow? Uh-huh. But it's kind of like, can you hear me? What is ambiguity tolerance? Uh, beauty tolerance, I just say that it's kind of like going through the flow of, you know, the different obstacles mm -hmm. of management. No, in the real world, not in managerial, for oh, example. Oh, well, yeah. Just in the real world. For example, COVID-19, COVID-19 just now is an ambiguous, uncertain state. We don't know anything about the future. For example, next three months of, some of us are very anxious. Our ambiguity tolerance is lower. Some of us say, that's good. 
everything will happen. I will manage myself. I will adapt to that position, to that state. It is higher ambiguity tolerance. I have a good tolerance about the future, about the ambiguous problems, ambiguous states. One of the greatest problems in decision making as the managers is to handle your ambiguity tolerance and your co-workers and employee ambiguity tolerance. Because of that, change management are not, outcomes are not always guaranteed. Reflecting on the experience of change as it has occurred in different organizations provides insight into the factors that can be involved and the variety of outcomes can occur. Because of that, it is good for you to know about the stories, also about the stories of people. If you want to have a good wisdom to analyze the personality of people, one of the good things you can do is reading great people autobiography or biography, no problem. Autobiography is better than biography. Autobiography is the biography written by the same person. What are the first three major game changers in business world during the last 10 years, last 20 years? Three names. One, everybody. It is not important. It's your own idea. It's not important. One, for example, one of the greatest game changers in the changing the game of business all around the world. For example, one of them is? Information technology. Maybe in for no, who is in information technology, for example? Okay, it is the area. Um, the CEO of um, Amazon, I guess. Amazon. What's the name of CEO of Amazon? Um, I'm so sorry, Laura, you should Jeff know Lee. it just now. David is yeah. saying. David, Jeff and Jeff his Peter. woman just become the richest woman in the world today. Yeah. With his ex woman. 123 million dollars. No, she has yes. 63 billion. 200 billion. billion. Ah, sorry, sorry, billion. 63 Thank you, Laura. billion. This is good. Jeff Pieces. Other one? Luisa, Kenneth, other one? Uh, globalization. That's Wait. becoming more. Oh, who is in globalization? Who is the first person, for example, in globalization? I want to know the name of the people that has changed greatly the, the game of business, the business world. It is called Game Changers. Wayne? Uh, two people that come into my mind. Uh, one is uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. Thank you. And, Next one. Uh, Elon Musk. I love Tesla. you. I love you. I love you, Wayne. That's great. The most creative person, courageous person, the most creative and courageous person just now in the earth is Elon Musk. Luisa, who is Elon Musk? Kenneth, who is Elon Musk? You are searching in the internet, Kenneth. No, he's the founder of the electric cars. Yeah. Or the electric car company. Yeah. What's the name of the Tesla. Tesla, thank you. Thank you. And please, please. Just tonight, read as a fun, not as, as a test, read as a fun about the space projects of Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and the gover federal government of America. These two people have some competition with the federal government of the United States to send the shuttles, space bus to space. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and uh, thank you. Okay. Why my managing change is not a simple matter, tension and paradox? At first, I want here to know that we have here. What is tension? When two or more ideas are in the position, opposition to each other, it is tension. It's very simple. And what is paradox? When two or more apparently correct ideas contracted to each other. Paradox is very complicated. A lot of paradox doesn't have any correct 
answers. Why? All answers are at, at least two answers are in contact together, but they are correct. This is paradox. It is paradoxical. Okay, go. We have why managing change is not a simple matter, tension and paradox. One, transformational change where it sweet small stuff. Transformational change. Two, organizational capability versus personal skills. How do you think about this? Is change in KQ is changing the organizational capability or we want to change the personal skills. Is it important? For example, in Calumu, we have some project for the next semester at, at the maximum time for the next semester to have some good courses, maybe in campus, maybe online from the major job matching assessment all around the world with the president and the chief officer uh, of uh, education part for the students. Is it personal skills or no? It is organizational capability. Which one? For example, EY teach you how you use the personality test to assess the personality traits of your coworkers. This type of education is an organizational capability development or not? It is a personal skills training. How do you think? You are one, one of the managers of an organization and we pay for you to be educated in a certain field of education. For example, knowing how you use personality trait for job matching, for hiring process and other things. This type of knowledge is your personal skills training or no? It is the organizational capability improvement. How do you think? I believe you as an asset in working for the organization, when you prove yourself, for example, it's as a personal improvement, you're gonna add to the organization as well, you know, you're gonna bring some more value to the company. David, what's your job now? Right now I work with the financial market, you know? I because, work with stock. Because your ideas are very professional and very experienced, that's good. Thank you, thank you, that's I appreciate good. it. Third, rapid change with the acceleration trap, acceleration trap. Everybody in new modern world is in the acceleration trap, faster and faster and faster, or rapid change. What is different between rapid change or accelerated change? What is different? Kenneth, do you want to say something? Um, I think acceleration trap is kind of like, kind of like a get rich quick kind of thing. Versus mm -hmm. like rapid change, it's like well thought out and it's well planned, and then it just yeah goes rapid change. It's a rapid change, change versus yeah, like it's change. It is planned change. What is it rapid? But acceleration right. trap is a trap. There is no certain goal. Only acceleration for everything. Wayne, how do you think? Yeah. Um, do you want to add anything or not? No, I think that was spot on. And change leader versus distributed leadership. And we will talk about it and learning lessons versus impleting lessons. I love you to do the learning lessons, not only impleting lessons, because the final product, not the final byproduct of everything in your life is about learning. Uh, I don't want to enter the psychological part of learning because it is very deep and very complicated sometimes. Okay, stories on the main ways of knowing, communicating and making sense of the world. Our stories have actors. Is there anybody here to know about the hero's journey? Have you heard it or not? Is anybody here to know about Jordan Peterson? 
I was gonna ask you uh, that about it right now because you said <laughs> a psychological thing it's very deep and complicated. And I was say, Professor, can I ask some kind of personal question? What do you think about Jordan Peterson? <laughs> I will ask you in email because it's a personal question. I cannot answer you <laughs> in media. Uh -huh. Jordan Peterson is one of the uh, complicated thinkers about the business from the very, very deep, sometimes like religious aspect of thinking about deep parts of personality, but entering the business. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a very good book, 12 uh, Rules, rules. of uh, 12, 12 Rules of Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you recommend it to, um, for entering the uh, business world? It is about psychological aspect of business and uh, Remind me, David, with the with the um, email that I will talk uh, about Jordan Peterson. Because okay. of that, I uh, I talk about the hero's journey. Please, 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 if you want, if you want to be a change manager and change leader, please read about Hero's Journey by Joseph Campbell. Hero's Journey. Read about everything about Hero's Journey. Hero's Journey only one book. But this concept is very, very important, very good attitude about the process of change in your life. Don't be afraid of the word hero. It is not about hero. It is about the hero life of everybody. And it is very documented, very evidence-based. It is not a story. It is a deep mythological aspect to every human life being also about jordan peterson it will show you some deeper aspects of your job even if you want to have good money to make good money okay you should be different if you are like other managers why good money the regular money why not different thinking different acting different feeling and different earning if you are regular sorry your payment will be regular. Our stories have actors, change leaders, other managers, staff and customers. It is the story of changing. They take decisions that lead to actions that trigger responses, keyword, acceptance, resistance, departure. In the hero's journey, departure is the first step. After departure is journey and returning. The hero's journey has departure, journey and returning. Before that, you have acceptance, you should have acceptance. And one of the greatest problems of human being is change resistance. Human being is the only being all around the world who has a very, very hard resistance to change. Because of that, in catastrophic positions, we will die. Jordan okay. Peterson. Jordan Peterson has a sentence that he used to say, we rather have the devil we know than the devil we don't know. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And there's a plot, a serious problem that could be solved by organizational change and consequences and other things. Okay, In, uh, these are the story of the companies. Most estimates, this is the tension and partners, most estimates put the failure rate of plan changes at around 60 to 50%. 60 to 50% for planned changes. Laura, do you want to say anything about it? You are hopeless about the change, make changing in the world with 60 to 70% of failure? Wow, it's a high rate of failure. In a global survey of 2000 uh, executives by the consulting company making and other than, 20% of responders said that their transformational changes had successfully improved performance and enabled the organization to sustain further improvements. Also, we will talk about how to increase the rate of success in producing change. The literature, the back history research and other co commentary can be difficult to access and observe for the following reasons. Multiple perspectives about the change, conceptual spread, float boundaries, 
rich history and varied setting. These are the different elements that contribute to gain a good knowledge, a good wisdom, something more than knowledge. You know, we have three parts. At first, it is knowledge. After that, it is uh, wisdom. After that, it is judgment. And after that, it is wisdom. You are now gaining knowledge. With working hard and to be more experienced, you will have some good judgment, something more than knowledge. And at the final state, you will have some multidimensional aspect to everything in your life, especially in your uh, professional field. This is called wisdom. Wisdom is when you are so mature to think about the everything in your life. And where to start with sweeping radical changes or gradual process in imitative? Is it a systematic tools or messy political process? Most of practical guidance on change implementation suggests a straightforward sequence of steps. Straightforward. With advanced support from diagnostic tools and assessment. What are the diagnostic tools and assessment, for example, in uh, management? Do you know? Say me the name of the assessment tools in hiring process. One of them. You will be a general manager of HR and you want to have to plan a hiring process. Luisa, how do you know about it? Do you know any assessment tools for using for a hiring process in a company? After one year, you will be a HR manager of a good company. And they said, we have a hiring process. Please plan for us, Luisa, how to assess the, for example, characteristic features of the personality of their skills. Do you know um, the name of the assessment tools or not? Yeah, you could take, for example, a personality test or let the applicants take a personality test. Thank you. And they are different. Do you know, do you know the name of the personality test or not? Do you know um, any of them? Yeah, it's I not knew. important. I am only asking. It's not important. Each of us doesn't, doesn't know about it. Wayne, do you know any personality test for a hiring process? I mean, uh, I know Myers Briggs is pretty popular. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Enneagram is pretty popular. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Es excellent. These are the, and also DISC, D I S C, DISC. DISC, MBTI, and Enneagram are the greatest assessment tool for personality features for as for job matching yeah and my company we use this thing called the ideal team player uh mentor mm -hmm. um and not only does it measure uh you know one's ability individual capability but also how that person fits within the team, how he works within a you know team environment. Mm -hmm. um, so it gives us a good idea of, you know, I know this person is a good qualified uh, candidate, but then his team working skills may not be uh, as strong. So and like, does it really, you know, is it really worth for us to hire him and affect the teamwork overall, you know, things like that. So we, we use that to, uh, kind of, yeah, filter or funnel different candidates. In this part, you can go to a study about the neuro, neuro leadership. Neuro leadership and neuro marketing. N E U R O, neuro leadership, neuro marketing. It is the usage of very scientific data, very scientific findings about the brain and neurological system, and use it straight in management and leadership. What type of, for example, brain characters can you use for leadership? And how can you guess the brain state of your customer if you are a sales force? It's very good. Because of that neural leadership, it is very, very new. Very, very new. I think the maximum is five years or six years. Neural leadership and neuromarketing. Neuromarketing is a little older, about 20, 15 years. After 20, yeah, 15 years. Okay, we have two graphs at the end of this part. It is the assessing depth of change of the scales, deeper, deep changing, sustaining innovation, shallow change, and not on the scale, it's out of the scales, and off the scale or out of the scales. 
It is also in your book. And this is about, I think, your uh, learning engagement in this week. Don't remember, please, please, please send, post your first learning engagement until the Wednesday night. After that, late work policy will apply for you. For first, for your major, for reply, you have time to Sunday night, okay. It is very important for me and also for the CMU leadership team. Your first should be until the Wednesday night. Your first post, it is about the, your learning engagement this week to be an effective change manager. This is what you need to understand the pressure and the drivers for change, internal and external, to diagnose the nature and depth of the changes required and individuals and organizational readiness. Preparation is the major part of doing and creating any type of change. If you are not prepared, sorry, you cannot be changed. It is like something go for, for example, bodybuilding or for fitness. The first weeks, the first sessions, there is no pressure on your body. Why? Because the coaches making you prepared for a heavy and heavy and heavy future works, for example, in bodybuilding. If you don't have any good warm up, your practice will not so be good. So what it is just exactly like a sport, like for example, running. We have warm up, practice and cool down. Every change in human being has this model. For example, the organization in a sport, it is called, for example, warm up stage. Here it is called preparation stage. And to determine what is going to change, what is your vision, what are your mission for the future, manage sustainability. It is a long, there is a long time and there are a lot of money and time you pay for creating change. And if you cannot keep your change, if it's not sustainable for you, you will lose everything that you have created uh, until now. So change. Uh, needs some specific types of maintenance and sustainability. And interview of change management. Okay, 10 minutes, we have a break for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, please be here. After, okay, it is uh, half past six. Half past six, be here to go to the next chapter. And at the end of this session, <clears throat> we have 15 minutes for your weekly quiz just in the class. I see you again after about 10 minutes. Sounds good. Okay, welcome again. We talk about these topics. Take a minute. To share it with you. Images of managing change, why change, diagnostic approach, vision and direction of change, organizational development, change management, sustained change, and effective change management. In the second part, we will talk about the images of change management. We are here to talk about this. Um, what are the names you can choose for someone who create change? What are the names in your mind? One of them is change manager. Other words, other phrases. Do you need do you want actual names of the people or just what they're yeah. called? No, no, no actual name. The phrases we can use for someone who create change or handle change in the real world, in the business world. One of them is, for example, a change manager. As you know, one of the my jobs is coaching, life coaching and executive coaching. For example, some types of people called change coach change leader, change manager. Like Simon Sinek? Yeah. 
change coordinator. These are the names we use for people who create change. We can talk about images of managing change, image of change outcomes, and images of change managers, and three core uses of images. This chapter is very important for you. Please study this chapter very carefully. It is the fundamental of your thinking about creating change. Very good data, very good and very applicable concepts about change and about the persons who can create change and also about the processes underlying deeper or not deeper changes. At first, look at this one. What can we do about this leadership course? It's a joke also. I don't know, what do you think? Is there anyone we could ask? They are confused about the necessity of the courses they are passed, for example, in their organizations. And sometimes I think and I see some students at the end of the course, they are also again confused about the necessity, about the applications of the courses they have passed. Sometimes I ask students, so what is the application, for example, of the course of leadership, they say. Yes, we know some concepts about the leadership styles and how you can lead people and organizations. I said, no, it is not about the applications. It is about the concepts. We have two definitions for everything. One, conceptual definition. Two, operational definition. If you cannot convert, you cannot change a conceptual definition to an operational definition, you will lose your job as a change manager. It is very important to have some daily life application for everything you are learning in your courses. Why? Because you will be manager, you will be leaders in the future, in the very near future, not the far future. And you can use your data, your education in your daily life because business is something your, your daily life, for example, if you are a parent, you can use your changing concepts that you have learned in your courses, like this course, in your parental style. Why? Because parenting is a matter of ever ending changing, ever ending changing. It is different types and different courses of time, for example, childhood, adolescence, adulthood, and other parts, and also about yourself. So this picture, say us, about the people confusion, about the applications of what they want to know and what they cannot apply their knowledge. It is knowledge, but application. When you use your knowledge in your daily life, it is not called knowledge, it is called attitude. Attitude is the internalized knowledge, that part of knowledge that you have taken in yourself, in your daily life, in your feelings, in your actions, in your thinking, it is your attitude. And as one of the greatest philosophers of success says, attitude is everything. So during these courses, especially like this course about change, the course of leadership, the course of negotiation and other parts you have studies or you will study during your master degree program, you should observe some concept for your daily life. Managing and leadership is a type of character. And we will help you to be able to change and to rebuild your character for to be a manager in all aspects of your life. In a leadership, in a leader in all aspects of in your life. We have at first two dimensions. One controlling managers and shaping managers. Two, intended manager and unintended manager. At first about the controlling, managing change. We have a scientist about uh, in the first half of the 20th century, so-called Faden. Faden theory of management, planning, organizing, commanding, coordinating, and controlling. Planning, organizing, 
commanding, coordinating, and controlling. In files uh, theory of manager, these are the major elements for creating a change and for managing a change, but it is not very new theory. It is near about uh, eight years ago that file theory of management was published. But now near uh, 2019, uh, 2009, contemporary management role says deciding, focusing, scheduling, communicating, controlling, leading, networking, building coalitions, and getting things done. In the history of human being, several ages you can see. For example, hunting age. After that, civil age. After that, industrial age. After that, economic age. And now is the age of what is the mo most important component of our age in, this, in these decades, for example, last three decades. What is the name of these decades? After economic and industrial age, we are in the age of? Wayne, do you have any? Information. Do you have any idea? It is the age of? Information. Thank you, Wayne. It's the age of information. And it is predicted that the next age will be the age of transformation, using information to create transformation. We are going to the age of transformation, something more than information. But the power is now in the hand of information owners, information uh, people that can talk about everything in different aspects of life. And uh, Sirkin's another uh, thinker about the management uh, images says, we have two types of factors in management of change, soft factors and hard factors. Soft factors, as you know, in management, we have some skills, it is called soft skills. And soft skills are the skills you should know for daily life management. For example, interpersonal communication is a soft skill. It is not exact related to your management skills, but it's the soft skills. You should have some good interpersonal communication skills for every aspect of your life. Or critical thinking, it is a soft skill. Creative thinking, it is a soft skill. Stress management, it's a soft skill. And more important than everything, more important than everything for a manager is time management. Time management is a soft skill. Also in other parts of science, they are called life skills. Life skills are the skills you should know to handle your daily life. They are life skills in management and in business, they are called soft skills. Soft factors, such culture, leadership, and motivation do not significantly affect the success of organizational change. And that change managers should concentrate on the hard factor. Instead, controlling, communicating, scheduling, and monitoring. We have two types of shaping. You remember, we have controlling management and shaping management versus this or that. We have two level, two skills and two uh, part of knowledge about shaping manager. Managers who want to shape the environment, not only to control the environment. They are something uh, like leaders. They want to shape the future of everything you are thinking about. Participative style of management and engaging employees collaboratively. Participative style of management um, in the course of leadership, if you have passed, okay, if you are not taking it, you will take it in the next semester or maybe this semester. In leadership, we have a very important chapter about the participative leadership. It's very important and very modern. It is in contrast with the traditional approaches to leadership. Participative style of management encourage involvement in decision-making in general, 
involvement, and in deciding the content and process of change in particular, general participation in decision making, and particular participation in the process of change. Do you know the name of the company, which is the most famous company in this aspect? The company has the greatest and highest rate of participation all around the world. Do you know? It's a car company, car making company. It's a Japanese car making company. Toyota. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Yes, Toyota. Toyota has the highest rate of participation with the employees. So Toyota shows that the highest rate of also organizational belongingness. They call themselves Toyota family, not Toyota company, because every employee in Toyota is a family member. It's like a family member. They, are, they have a very high zest, high passion, and a high sense of belongingness to their company. And also, it is one of the um, most creative companies around the world, and it has some type of management that dictated to other companies in the Far East, in the Oriental, Oriental companies like uh, Hyundai and Hyundai. A lot of them has uh, copied the strategies for participation in Toyota. And engaging employees collaboratively. The success of transformational change depends on engaged employees collaborating throughout the company and throughout the transformation journey. Everything in business, everything in any type of process is like a journey. On what are the stage of journey? We talk about it. Departure, journey, and, re and return. It's a, like everyday life. Everyone, uh, every time you need to create some change in your details of your life, not very huge change, not very huge change. For example, you think that I am not so rapid in reading. I need to change my reading skills. At first, you should uh, have some preparation for the new skills. And after that, it is the journey, practicing the reading skills. And after that, return to the same point and the higher level, you will start to read the same material with the higher speed, for example. It's a journey. It is not very important to be a huge journey to have a, to create some huge changes. It should be about the very, very small parts of your life, every part of your life that you want or you need to create change, it is a journey. And as you see here, it is uh, called transformational journey. It is about the change. And on building capabilities, particular leadership capability that we talk about it, that it is personal or not personal. Okay, so we have two parts here, shaping and controlling. We will talk about the six figures of change management and in two aspects. One aspect is controlling versus shaping and other part is about intended versus unintended. Intended change outcomes, partially intended change outcome, and unintended change outcomes. Um, what is the concept of intention here? I know it may seem so uh, simple, but talk about it. Can you have very exact, accurate goal for the change or not? And can you create the change in your life, in your organization, so intentionally or not? How do you think? What is the role of your intention in creating change or managing change? Do you have any important role, major role in creating or handling change or not? It is accidental and after accidental change, you can only have the managing the change. What about the creating the change? Anybody? David, Kenneth? What was the question again, sorry? The question is that we have two type of 
confronting with change at first. One change cannot be created intentionally. It is accidental. For example, COVID-19 is accidental. But after that, as a manager, you should handle the change. It's one part. And other part is no. You target some changes in your life, in your company, in your business, and by your own intention, so intentionally, you will create your change. How do you think? Which is better, which is more powerful, which is uh, applicable in your uh, business, in your organization, or even your life? It is better to wait to make a change and after that handle it or not. It is good to create intentionally the change. I think, uh, I think creating a change is more powerful than anything because you because you have your hands on it and then like if if you're running a business and you make the change yourself then of course since it's, since it's your business you're going to make it you're going to make it what you want it to be because you're going to put your 110% into it if that if that answers your question and which is more possible? Is it possible to create intentionally every type of change we want to have in our organization or in our daily life or not? Talk to me about the possibility, real possibility. How do you think? Can we intentionally create a change in our life intentionally and with a good prediction? There's a proverb here in success coaching that we say, if you want to predict fully the future, you should create the future. If you want to predict fully the future, you should create the future. Is it possible in the real field of life or not? It is only a motto. I believe it is a mix of them because you can't control everything in life. So as a COVID-19, there will be some things that will gonna happen to you in life. But at the same time, I believe that 90% of you and what you become, it is how you behave and how you act according to the things that happen to you in life, not the things that happen in life. For example, COVID-19 happened to everyone in the world. Yeah. What, what's going to make the difference in each one of us is going to be how we, as an independent, independent person, how we're going to behave after that, how we're going to change, if we're going to use the right word. So for some people, COVID-19, it was... It came, uh, it came for a good change. Some people, they came for a bad change. I don't know. It depends on each one of us. So you believe to the reactions, to the personal reactions, personal interpretation, and personal gaining of an accidental change. Luisa, how do you think about it? It is good to manage the pre-accidental changes or no, to plan to create our needed changes in the future. How do you think? And which is think, more possible in your mind? I think it's good to have a plan and to try to minimize other risks that come from not planning a lot. But by also planning too much, it could um, minimize creativity among employees mm -hmm. because they, they are not thinking themselves anymore on, because they only follow the plan that was given to them. Mm -hmm. So it, I think it's good to um, have a plan, a strategy, but not um, yeah, plan everything in detail, maybe. Why? Because then people also don't, can't react flexible anymore mm -hmm. because they uh, see a problem and they think, oh, we have to react like this because that's what the plan says. But that might be not the best way to go. So you think that having some details about your plan reduces your flexibility to planning the change and to implementing the change? Do you think having some details, or rigid details, is not so good for to be to being successful in your planning for uh, your desired change? Are you saying me justice? Um, some, sometimes, of course, it's good to have details and goals and very specific goals. But 
It always depends on the area. So sometimes it's good to leave an open area so uh -huh. employees can decide. And also, yeah, I think it would give them also maybe more motivation to mm -hmm. do their tasks mm -hmm. when they have the feeling they can, they're able to um, have some kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it's something in between. <laughs> Anybody else? Is it good to wait to be under the pressure of accidental change or sometimes not accidental, but external changes out of our body, out of our control, out of our authority. And after that, know how to manage the out of the control changes or not to predict the futures and create the changes we will need in the future. Luisa said, no, it is good to create the changes we need, but not in details, because it reduces our flexibility for the unpredicted condition in the future. And David said, yes, it is good that sometimes it is accidental, but it is not important that accidental or not accidental. It is important how to react to an accidental act. Yes, and he example, uh, COVID-19, that it is a general, it is pandemic all around the world, but everybody have in different aspects, reactions to the pandemic. Anybody? Wayne, do you have any idea about it? You are a major thinker in our group. Uh, I love your ideas. It is very good. Do you have any idea about it? Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> uh, is there anything you want to add to the, uh, these ideas about the, what, is, uh, what are our ranking for handling change, waiting to come the external changes and after that, we should only manage ourselves and changing conditions or no. We should predict the future and know about the future. Have you seen the movie Marginal Call? Oh. I remember one sentence from Marginal when I was talking to you. I was, Please uh, see this movie, watch this movie, Marginal Call. It is about. It is a very great movie, very good movie, uh, but it is about the uh, 2008 economic recession in America in the stock market. It is some philosophical mind about the psychology of recession. As David says, we can handle only the, uh, our management to the economy, to the external changes. We can only ha man, um, handle our reactions. Marginal Call is a very good movie about this concept. And I will put the um, uh, advertise of this movie, trailer of this movie on the Moodle for you also. There is a uh, conversation there that someone come to the company that he is the general manager and says to the second part of the co-workers, do you know why I am boss? For example, $2 million, I think, $2 million per year, but you are not boss. They said, we don't know. We work as you, so hard worker, but why you are boss? And he says, because I can see the future. Because of that, I am the manager, I'm the boss, I'm the leader. And it is true. Why it is very important for everybody who wants to enter the field of economy, the field of management, it is mandatory for everyone in this field to know a good knowledge history about the history of economic up-down, for example, in the last 50 years, at least 50 years. It will give you a good power for prediction of the future. It is very, very near together. The same accent, the same events will repeat, repeat, repeat again, especially in capitalistic countries like America. You have a very good time duration for predicting the future. Uh, if each of you work in the stock market and analyzing the stock market, in the stock market, there are a lot of tools that give you 
the tools for predicting the future of a stock in the ordinary condition also, not in an, an ordinary. Okay. The dominant assumption of intended change outcome is intended change outcomes can be achieved as planned. So good. You can plan and you can gain. You can plan a change and you can, in this approach, intended change outcomes. Change is the realization of prior intent through the actions of change. It is like planning, you know? Human beings are the only beings all around the world that can have imagination. Imagination is the only brain feature that you have and champions does not. Never, no, none of the champions does not have any ability to Im imagination about the future. Because of that, you can plan everything. What is the meaning of planning? Planning is have something accurate and prepared imagination about the future. It is planning. Accuracy is the major part of um, planning. The dis um, something distinguished planning, for example, with art, is art is not so accurate, it is artistic, free, but planning is very, very mathematical with the logical, with the logics behind the planning. Because of that, at the first stage, we want to have some intended change outcomes. Three broad strategies for producing intentional change use. Empirical rational strategies, normative re-educative strategies, and power coercive strategies. In empirical rational strategies, assume that people pursue their own self-interest. Yeah. Why? Because it's my choice. It's my interest. I love it. I like it. Assume that people pursue their own self-interest. What is the role of self-interest in gaining and guiding and handling change? It is effective change occurs when a change can be demonstrated as desirable. For example, if you want to create some changes in your company, with those changes are not desirable for your coworkers, for your employees, you will have a lot of change resistance in your company. It is not so easy to create that type of change. Based upon this approach, empirical, rational strategies, effective change occurs when a change can be demonstrated as desirable and is aligned with the interests of group who are affected. Whether change at those properties then intended outcome will be achieved. It is one approach. The second one about the intended change outcome, it's a more broad strategy is normative re-educative strategy. Assume that changes occur when people abandon their traditional normative orientation and commit to new ways of thinking. Nobody wants to change so deeply. So, if your change is so deeply for people, they will be change resistant because they don't want to lose their roots of thinking. In psychology, we call it core attitudes. Core attitudes are the thinking, are the attitudes, are the schemas of the cognitions which are underlying basic of your mind. It is your mindset, it is your mental syntax about your thinking. Because of that, in normative re-educative strategy says that if you want to handle a change for some people, you don't change their core beliefs. After that, they will protest against you. After that, they will react to you in opposition of the stage, not in agreement with you. Producing intentional outcomes in this way involves changes in information and knowledge, but also in attitudes and values. Pay attention, attitudes and values. Um, I want to give you some extra and out of your book category for creating a change. In life coaching, when I want to create some changes in your life, 
I, as a life coach, as a PhD of psychology, talk to you about five stages. Please remember in your mind, or if you want, you can write it somewhere. At first, we talk about your values and to find your values. Values are the major part of your decision, of your judgments. Upon your judgment about your decisions, you can find which is very important, very crucial for me. This is your values. After that, from your values, you will have some beliefs. The third part is your expectations. The fourth part is your goals. And after that, it's your actions. After this stage, these are the results. You will gain your results. So we have five parts as a hierarchy for gaining your goals. First, values, beliefs, expectations, goals, actions. After that, your results. And a lot of time, your results again will confirm your values. Because of that, if you have some bad or destructive habits, you will be in a vicious cycle. Why? Your results again will confirm your values. So if you want to change somebody, at first you should not work at the values. That is a very core belief. These sentences, this chapter is saying you, when you want to work with people, the final, your final goal should be their value. You should at first act, act as actions, sometimes on their goals, sometimes on their expectations, sometimes on their beliefs, and so rarely on their values. Except of that, you will have some change resistant people around yourself. And power coercive strategy. Excuse me, are... I have a question. Yeah. Um, I can't find the PowerPoint slides that are downloaded? Yeah. No, no, no. It is my PowerPoint. I will send for you. Oh, okay. Thank it is you. not in the it is not in the Moodle. It is my uh, PowerPoint and I will send for all of you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Your PowerPoint in the Moodle is very simple. It is my modified form. The third part is power coercive strategies. Rely on achieving the intended outcomes through the compliant behavior of those mm -hmm who have less power. Power may of course be exercised, but legitimate authority or through other less legitimate coercive means. It is, the, what does it mean? It means that when you are talking about power in the very famous chapter of new modern psychological aspects about success, we have something about resilience. Resilience, talk about power. And power have four dimensions in resilience. One, power is something that you can use to defend. In contrast to the other people when attack you, if you have power, you can defend yourself. Second part of power is you can predict other people's attack against you. Third power, a third part of power that you are engaging with as a manager is the power to handle other people. And fourth power is you have a charismatic personality, prestigious credit in your society. These sentences are talking about the power against uh, using power to change in other people who are weaker than you but partially intended change outcomes. It is assumed that some, but not all planned change outcomes are achievable. It is partial. Power, processes, interests, and different skill levels of managers affect their ability to produce intended outcome, but not fully. The both intended and unintended consequences may emerge from the actions of change managers you are the game changers of your company. Sorry, I should bring my battery.
The both intended and unintended consequences may emerge from the action of change managers. You will be the game changers of your companies. Every company has a regular change. And for adopting with the ever-changing world, no company can be at the same level, at the same actions. Change is unavoidable. We cannot avoid change. So you should learn how to predict the necessary changes in the future, in the future of money, in the future of economy, in the future of emotions, in the future of society, every part of uh, every, every matter that you are leading or you are managing. And or externally imposed forces may modify what was originally intended. For these reasons, change initiatives don't always deliver the outcomes that were planned and unintended change outcomes. This is a common theme in mainstream organization theory. Very, very common. This image recognizes that managers often have great difficulty in achieving the change outcomes that were intended. Why? What type of manager you are that you cannot handle the changes you need in your organization? Why are you calling yourself manager when you cannot handle changes or you cannot create changes? It says that it is common theme. It's not so rare. It is common in the organization that managers cannot achieve their, uh, for example, uh, intended outcomes. How do you think? What are the greatest barriers against creating the change, the predictable or unpredictable change in our organizations? Nobody, anybody? Thinkers, great thinkers. Who the students? Kenneth, Wayne, David. Can you repeat the question again, sorry? What are the barriers in an organization, an ordinary organization, in confrontation with predicting change and creating the predictable changes? I'm a manager. I want to do some changes in my company, in my organization. The text, the textbooks that you are studying says that it is the common theme in an organization not to achieve their intended outcomes. Why? What are the barriers to create and to manage the intended changes? It is very hard for a manager not to be able to create change in the company. How do you think about the barriers? First, I would say oh. budget, and then the second, the conflict of interest. The, the first was what? Sorry. Budget. Uh huh. Second. The second conflict between interests between the shareholders and the uh -huh. managers, the employees. Mm -hmm. Is it important the interest of employees in the company? It yes. is. Why they are employee? Why? Because. At the end of the day, they also make the company go. Mm -hmm. And so they have to have the company owner's best interest at heart. And if they're not on the same page as the boss, then they just go. They should be, or no, it's a preference only. It's they a preference. Preference. And it affect, uh, affects the productivity of the company if they are at the same page or not. Yeah, if they yeah. are at the same page, managers and uh, co-workers and employees are at the same page, it is good for a company or not? Uh, it is good for a company. But um, it's also important to have those who, if it's a bad idea, like let's say like the boss has a good idea and then the employee says, hey, what about this? And then it's important that they can co somehow come to a common ground, especially if the boss is kind of making irrational decisions in the company or whatever. What is your strategy to gain the contribution of other employees in your company, your satisfaction to create your change? If you are, for example, after one year, you go to a company and you will be a 
mid-level manager and they said to you, go and uh, make them satisfied to corporate, to cooperate with us as the managers, as the owners, as the shareholders, to create a change. What is your strategy? How does it only go and talk to them? Only that or not other strategies? Uh, well, I think it starts with, at first it starts with the hiring process to make sure that. that no, they are higher. They are higher. No, no I'm saying like higher. during the hiring process, you know how you get to know people? And then you kind of see where they're at. You kind of see if they're good for the good for the company. You kind of see where their morals is at. So it starts there for one. And then as far as like us getting on the same page as a manager, mm-hmm. it's my job to make them see that thoroughly. Like I have to dem- I have to demonstrate the vision thoroughly, so mm-hmm. they can understand where I come from as a manager. Conversation with employees are a part of human resources or not? Major or mid-level managers. You send your human resources employee to talk about the changes with other employees or not? You as a manager, as a mid-level manager, go straight and talk to your coworkers and to your uh, employees. Why my students are not engaged with the discussions? Why? Are you at, are you at the question you asked before us as students, are you asking a question? Because I was, I was honestly confused on what you were asking. No, I was uh, asking you that, for example, if you are a general manager. Okay. After five years and you want to make some changes in your company. Do you talk to your HR personnel, HR staff that go to the other employees and talk about the changes and make them satisfied to go with us and other and other, or no, you talk to your mid-level managers, which part is responsible do you think in this making a good atmosphere for creating a new change? As a general manager, how do you think? Oh, um, HR or mid-level managers? That's my question. HR is higher than middle of a manager, right? Yeah. No, no, no. I, it, is not about the, it is not about the differences of level. Oh, it's all level? Of course, I'm going to talk to you. At the leader. same level. At the same level. You ask okay. Me well, Which is course. better? HR personnel is more professional to make a good atmosphere in a company to create a new change. Or no, the mid-level manager that they are day-to-day work to the co-workers and other employees. For creating a change, a new change, which is better? Someone who is more professional, HR personnel are more professional in conversation, in interpersonal, but they are not so near the employees. They are at their office. But mid-level managers are together to the employees and work together every day. But they are not so professional, for example, in communication skills. As a general manager, what is your decision? HR personnel go to the company and talk to the uh, personnel about the new changes or no. Mid-level managers that they work to, but they don't have any, sometimes they don't have any professional communication skills. How do you think and what your decision and other students also can answer? I would say I would go to the HR department because they also implement some training, some policies and so on for the new change. Mm-hmm. And they make sure to also talk to the Mm mid-managers, mid-level managers. So they also, because it's important, they are also aware and also implemented. So I think I would go. Have you done any business or uh, corporation job, Luisa? Uh, No. Do you have any experience? Not so much, no. You are so smart because this is the correct answer. Not HR not mid-level, HR will go to train mid-level manager to talk about it. Thank you, it's very good, excellent. You will talk as a general manager to HR personals and send them to the internal parts of factory, internal parts of company, organization, whatever it is, and they will train the mid-level manager. So it has two parts, two stages, not a straight HR, not a straight, non-professional in communication skills, 
people who are mid-level manager at the first level HR and at the thank you thank you okay and internal forces can include interdepartmental politics we are talking about the failure of gaining the intended change outcomes which are unintended change outcomes the internal forces included interdepartmental -department, politics long established working practices that are difficult to dislodge and deep seated perceptions and values that are inconsistent with the desire changing it is something like a culture every company every organization has a culture sometimes it is racial based culture for example if a lot of people with a specific race with a specific ethnicity work in a company they are dominant in the company and their racial ethnic ethnical culture can sometimes push the company to have some specific type of management uh, um, specifically in the small cities you can uh, see it that sometimes the company cannot handle its company its own organization with its own policies why this is a very small city and the minority is a very huge part of a minority in the country has a huge part of that is small city so the company should avoid any conflict with the dominant culture in that city it is about inconsistent with desire changes and external internal forces can include this is and external forces can include confrontational industrial relations especially in competition and legislative requirements about trust what is trust do you know what is trust in management in industry in business when we say trust companies for example oil trust companies also is it illegal in the america what is trust Trust companies are two or three companies that capture all the market in one area of business. It is illegal in, in the United States. We have a very clear, rigid, and serious act about it. It is Antitrust Act. It is very important. Also, it is not related to now. It is about 40 or 50 years ago after world war ii in, in the society of america they saw that wow some companies have a very very great dominance in every aspect of a specific domain of industry and they are handling ev everything and sometimes misuse the industry for example without no um, acceptable reason they hide the prices or sometimes gathering markets into one specific direct that is not uh, based upon the for example capitalistic principles of american uh, economy it is called trust and it is illegal in america to be in trust for a, a certain area of industry it is legislative requirement sometimes it is indicated to death or industry-wide trends affecting an entire sector trade san sanctions run on the stock market and not these factors these forces override the influence of individual change managers override pay attention these factors are more important than the intention of individual change managers whose intention can be easily swept at the last part we will talk about the six figures six images of change managers we have two parts controlling manager activities and shaping managers capabilities and we have three type of intention intended partially intended and unintended a manager who wants to control intentionally something is a director we will talk about it in details a manager who shaped the capability intentionally is called coach a manager who control the market who control with partially intentionally it is navigator and a manager 
interpreter and other parts here. Director, based on an image of management here, director is here, a manager who wants control activities so intentionally, he or she is called director. Based on image of management as control and of change outcomes as being achievable, supported by the n-step models and contingency theory. This is the, these are the models of change. Coach is someone who wants to shape the capabilities in a company very, very intentionally. One of the greatest differences between the managers, leaders, and coaches, that coach is purposeful, goal-oriented, very, very goal-oriented. It is intentionally. So coaches are people who shape the capability, not control the activity, shape the capability, potentials, strengths, virtues in a company, so intentionally. Coach relies upon building in the right set of values, skills, and drills that are deemed to be the best ones to be drawn upon in order to achieve desired organizational outcomes related to OD approach. Who is Navigator? Navigator is a manager who wants to control the activities. At first, he wants to control the activities but partially intentionally, partially intended, not fully intended, not unintended, partially intentionally, partially intended, control the activities. He or she is called navigator. As you see, for example, in other parts of your life, you have some things called navigator. So navigator is in the aspects of intention, partially intention. In the aspects of uh, consumption, it is controlling activities, not shaping abilities. When you want to control activities, at the basic part, you are a manager. When you want to shape the capability, at the basic part, you are a leader. Because in shaping capabilities, you are talking about the future. You are talking about the new skills. In control activities, you, are, uh, want, you want to administrate, you want to handle the present abilities, not about the future. It is sometimes of management. An interpreter, navigator control is the heart of management action, although a variety of external factors mean that managers may achieve some intended change outcomes and others will occur over which they have little control. Because of that, it is called partially intentionally, partially intended. One part is under control or allow, sometimes it is little control. And supported by the contextualities and procedural theories of change. Interpreter is a manager who wants to shape the capabilities, but partially intentionally. It is, this table is very important, very, very important. A lot of major concepts about the leadership, management, and every aspect of persons who are involved with changing and with handling change is in this table. So look at the table very carefully and also with the descriptions in the other pages or other PowerPoints. Interpreter. Interpreter, the manager creates meaning for other organizational members, helping them to make sense of various organizational events and actions. It is about shaping capabilities. And caretaker, caretaker is a manager who wants to control activities, but unintended, not intentional, and no intention is in, in caretaker you can see, no intention. It is controlling activities without any intention. What is the description of caretaker taker? The manager control is severely impeded by a variety of internal and external forces beyond their scope. Because of that, we say this is unintentional, unintended. The caretaker shepherds their organization along as best they can. 
they want to control the activities. And the last part, shaping capabilities, but no intention, unintended. It is nurturer. Nurturer are even small changes may have a large impact on organizations when the leaders are nurturer. They don't have any control over the activities. They don't have any intention over their activities. They have no intention, but want to shape their capabilities. So even small changes may have a large impact on organizations and managers are not able to control the outcome of these changes because of this is out of the intention, but may nurture their organizations. There are some types of opportunistic looking at the changes in the companies. We, we are finding, we are looking for some chances, some opportunities in our organization to find the best practice we can do in our organization. This facilitates organizational qualities that enable positive self-organizing to occur. These six images of change, these are six. One, director, coach, navigator, interpreter, caretaker, and nurturer. These six images of change manager have three core uses. They highlight a variety of assumptions that change managers make about change and increase the awareness of different interpretation of change. You have six images of change. You have six interpretation about change. And, and they draw attention to the dominant images of change within an organization. And finally, they highlight a range of perspectives available to change manager. I think studying line by line, page by page of this chapter can help you in your daily life to increase your consciousness about the change and your awareness about yourself. Because it is a philosophical mind, but applicable philosophical mind, not pure philosophical mind about the change, about the different aspects of change. Any question? Nobody? Now you can go to your quiz week and have 15 minutes to pass the quiz. Please don't, don't forget the, do the, the time for your first post for the Wednesday. I want you to have a great great at the end of the course and that's it be involved with me also with my uh, email address in the university and after that see you the next week is there any question i am here now from now until the next 15 minutes Your weekly quiz have five questions, multiple choices. Each question has four points. The total point for your quiz is 20. Eight weeks, 820, 160 points. Out of 1,000 points for the final grade.
Bye bye, Professor. What's up? Can we leave after we're done? Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. See you. See you next week. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Kenneth. Okay. Good night. Good night.